I mentioned that it has to do with another feminine theme. So let's look at that now. Where'd my eraser go? Here we go. Okay, where is our mimer to be found? Let's see. It's a... Uh, in the Kute Torah. Parshas Ki Seitze and Seitze and it is uh, the mimer is Ki Siena Leish Shtenashim. There it is. No, it, it's not that one. Maybe it's the page, a page before that. No, it's 74. Okay. Well, that's still last week's Parsha. Last week's mimer. You have 74 there? Okay, I, I had it and I don't see it, so I'm going to have to. Actually, it it's. Um, dirt. Yeah, seventy four to seventy six. Let me just get the homage. Okay, this is found in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 15. Let's look at the shot. Yeah, that's it. Ki siena leish te nashim. If a man has two wives, which, of course, historically, there are times when this was permitted. Ha'achas auva. One beloved and one hated, despised. The the Yaldu Lo Vonim and they both bear him sons. Hauva Vasnua, Vayah Ben Habuchor Lasnia. So the firstborn son is from the despised wife. This the whole section is talking about inheritance. Who gets the inheritance? And the inheritance of the firstborn. And does what, you know, how does this affect this process? Um, and I mean, I, the, what the Psukim say that he should give, he would give 
to this, he can't give to the son of the beloved wife. Because the firstborn receives a double portion of his father's inheritance. So he, so the, so that son, that firstborn son, no matter which wife he comes from, should get the double portion. Because he's what's called reishis ono, the beginning of his male strength. Lo mishpat b'chora. So he, he gets this birthright. Um, okay. It's interesting. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. So now if we look, we want to understand Al-Pi Chassidus now by looking at the mimer. What does this mean? What's the the lesson. So again, notice that it's the theme of the female. We just learned about another woman, and here's another idea of wives. And we just learned that the whole month of Elul and Tishrei has to do with marriage and the bride and the renewed relationship. So this theme is, we see uh, permeating into all areas here. Okay. He siena le ishte na shem a chasahuva ve a chasnua ve haya habena bechor le snia. Okay, excuse me. So the altar of it begins the mimer, lahavin. Let's see, let me make this bigger. There we go. Wait, is that the right? Oh, there it is. Okay. No, it gets going back to the old thing. Okay. Lahavin mimer, vahaya. Who al pi mashikosuv, or Chaim Vital, Bashar Kedush, Shiesh, Lechol Echad, Vechad, Misrael, Shte Nefoshes. Okay, right away. He's explaining that this is talking about two souls. The two wives are the two souls. Now, do you have this translated? I mean, are we, there is the na adapta adaptation was sent, right? From uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. I can get the, adap the, the adaptation I have, but you know, well, it's not one, a yeah. translation, so I, I follow right, It's not a translation. Okay, yeah. but just maybe that makes sure everyone has. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, here we have the English. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go back. So, so this, the two wives are the two souls. And the Shamas are not on the Pusik says, and the souls that I made, it's plural. It means there's two souls, two dimensions. Lashen Rabim, plural. Nefesh Achas, it's like it says in Tanya. One soul, Nikra Nefesh Achiyunis. Dubi, can you do the gate or whatever? Or I think he wants to take care of this, please. Okay, so two souls, and what did we say? Oh, so you have what's called nefesh hachiyunis. Right, nefesh hachiyunis, this is also a term used in Tanya. He said that he moves his truck, so if you want to put the red, the Yeah, I'll do it after the call. Okay, so this is called the vivifying soul. Right, which is another, it's really another name for the animal soul. So 
the nefesh abahamis or the nefesh achiyunis talking about. So this nefesh, oh, here he says achiyunis habahamis. He uses both names. Uh, what is the meaning of achiyunis? Uh, why, why the different name? Well, one, one explanation is the chiyunis is the sechel of the animal soul, and the nefesh of Bahamis are the midos of the animal soul. That's one possibility. So, and then Bahamis is the animal, like a behemoth. So, of course, and, and here in the Pasuk, we're saying one is beloved and one is despised. So let's see how he develops that. So the animal soul, the vivifying soul, is enclosed in our blood. And it's just like the blood. That's, that's actually the idea. The blood is enlivening us. So it's, there's a physical level and there's the spiritual level enlivening our soul. And here he says, La chayes a goof, to enliven the body. Now, we, we think of the animal soul as, low, as more lowly because it's dealing with lowly things, with worldly things as opposed to godly things. But he explains here a very important point that it comes, it comes down from a very high place. Mo'od gavoa, gavoa is high. Al yidei emtsaim rabim v'derech sarim mazalot. It's the contraction of all of this spirituality, through all kinds of um, stages, through uh, princes and angels and mazalot and constellations, all kinds of ways that it's, it's contracting and being concealed and coming down into the physicality of the world. Chazal even say that there's not even one blade of grass that is not governed or being uh, is not being enlivened and, and its root is not coming from a from its spiritual source it's very high up and that source it says is the one that tells it the, the mazal is saying um, what is it what is the mamre chazal that en lecha esed one blade of grass below that doesn't have a mazel that is tapping it and saying, grow, grow, <laughs> move. The wind, you know, uh, develop. Uh, so the, the, the hashkocha is on every detail coming from, from above. Ki gavoa me'al gavoa. There's level after level of, you know, different levels of creation and this process. Because it's so far away from the light of Hashem, it's coming down from level to level and from a cause to effect, evolving. More and more concealment in order to allow it to be, to exist as something physical. Godliness enclosed in physicality. And then it comes down into man. So we're you know, say the highest level of the lower, the lowest level. And, and what is coming down and what's the lowest level within us? That's the Midos Raos, our evil traits, our bad traits, 
or ungodly traits. And those correspond to the godly ones. So, and where do they come from? Yesodos haraim shaba vegam sechel ha'enushi. And then he says, and that's also part of this descent. It's coming down into human intellect. That's what sechel enushi is. Which is very great. It's human intellect, but it's very limited. And uh, part of this process of contraction. Key. Kol nefesh klula mi midos. So we're talking about two souls, like the two wives. But each soul is composed of intellect and and, and, and emotions. Chabad is the intellect, Chochma bin Adas. And the Midos are Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Nasser, Yusei, Mauchus. And Sida yechol adam liot mi ovre ritzono chas v'sholem. So we, here we are in this world, and we're functioning with these two nefashot, nefesh alkis, nefesh bahamis, and the and the altar the altar of estates clearly here that from the from the animal soul, the vivifying soul, a person can be from amongst those who transgress the divine will. If we were given all these koiches. And we can even use our God-given powers to reject God. Chas v'shalom. Those are his rachman alitzlan. Chas v'shalom, he says. Kumo shekasuv v'nefesh ki sechete. The Pesach says, when a soul will sin, meaning that's a likely possibility. It happens. It's part of our existence in this world. So how do we sin? Because there's all this, these layers covering and blocking and screens and shades and dark, you know, all kinds of coverings that are concealing and hiding the godly light, the infinite light of God, Borchu. Therefore, near El Adam, Shuhu Yesh, Vedavar Bifne Atzmo. So we're sitting here in our goof and looking out at the world, and it seems like we're just independent beings. And that whatever we choose happens, and whatever we accomplish, it's our accomplishment and the world is independent of God. We are, we are davar bifne atzmo. We are independent. V'nefesh ashenis. So that's all a description of the, the animal soul and where it can take us. As v'sholem if unprotected, uncontrolled. The godly soul, the second soul, and again, we can look in Tanya and see corresponding descriptions here. Uh, so the godly nefesh shenis, Israel nikra nefesh elokis. So the second soul, go, go down a couple lines. Yeah, that's it at the end of that. Nefesh shenis. Is nikra nefesh elokis, the godly soul. Chelek eloka mimal is a portion of God above. It's an actual portion. Vihi habal adam beli emtsaim klal. Now this doesn't come to a person through any means or intermediaries. Kamosh kosu ve'alokim Asasa Dam Yashar. It says in Koheles, and God made man upright. Right? So that he says is referring to the godly soul. Kamash Kosov. 
And this we, we refer to every day when we daven. We say, Lokaina Shama, Shinasata Bitahorahi, Atavarata Tsaratavata Nefahta Bi. That's the words here, Vafata Nefahta Bi. You blew this soul into me. So here the Alter Rebbe describes what these words mean. He says, Vata, you, Mamish. You, God, yourself, your, your essence. Without intermediaries, a portion of you given directly to the Jew. And he blew into his nostrils the soul of life. And so he says, yeah, we can look at this through an example. Like, in man, man, hevel ha'adam. A man's the breath of man, your hevel. So your breath is shiyoitse mimeno. When you breathe, your breath goes out from you. But it's not leaving us, chas v'sholem. If the breath of life would leave, we wouldn't be able to function, right? So it's there, but it's flowing in and out, inhalation, exhalation. But we have sick without end, continually. Ki en lecha dibur shechutz mimenu. Right, so your speech also is connected to your breath. And as you talk, also you're using your breath to express outward, and then you breathe back in. So he says, this is all a muscle for the soul. So may I ask a quick question in this? What? May I ask a quick question? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's just, I'm be, like, I'm just really obtuse today, but I get that the two wives correspond to the two souls. But then I don't really see in the Parsha how the story connects to everything that you've just said about the nature of the two souls and, you know, what happens. Like, are there any direct connections we can make with the, the mitzvah con concerning the two wives and the necessity to um, not differentiate when it comes to their sons and so on. I just, I just want to, I want to get kind of a more direct connection if there is one, or maybe I'm asking the wrong question. I'm not sure. Well, I think it's early, but he's, his direction is that the question is why does the son of the, the despised wife get the inheritance. So here he's already talking about the special special qualities of the animal soul. Okay. The animal soul has virtues and certain things that are superior to the godly soul. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. So let's let's see, we'll get to that soon. So so that's like the breath. So, lachen tamid hi miucheres vematzila betachlis ayichud. So the breath is always connected to your essence um, in an essential unification, in an essential way. And if it was just left up, if you only had a godly soul, so the altar says, Mitzida, lo aya bef sharuta dam lachto klau. You wouldn't have any ability to sin or to transgress, liot mi ovre ritsono, to transgress the divine will. Kreshihim yucheres tamid, because the godly soul is always connected to its essence, to the essence of God. It's a chelek aloka mi mal mamish. 
So it just it's not that you couldn't sin. So where does the sin come from? And again, we want to. This is an important idea because we're talking about Elul and doing tshuva. So, so what causes us to sin, and how do we rectify that? So let's go to the next page. Okay, tell me which page is next. Alamed Het. Okay, hold on. Alamed. Alamed Het. Okay, got it. Okay, so she's always connected but in, in, her, in her source of emanation. Zulas Shanefesh, as opposed to the Nefesh of Bahamis. That's malbish ota umechaseu malim me habit beor and so boruchu. As opposed to the godly, the animal soul that uh, is enclosed it, right? The, the, the godly soul is clothed in the animal soul, conceals, hides over, and prevents it from looking at the infinite light of God. So you got these two things going on, these two what's. And, and he's already implying that it's the animal soul that leads us to sin. So these two souls are alluded to in the scriptures in, in Genesis. You're muted, Yehudis. You're muted, we can't hear you. You're still muted, you have to unmute yourself, Yehudis. Okay, there we go. So let's just uh, quote that pasuk. So it says in God, created man um, in Genesis 1 verse 26 it says and God said let us make man in our in our image and in our likeness in our image and in our likeness. So the, the Hebrew word for likeness is selim. And like, oh, excuse me, for image and likeness is demut. So tselem would be, be like in matzlema, which would correspond to like exactly. an image, yes. uh, in you know, an image from a photo, and yes. and um, demus is is a resemblance. Uh huh. Domes, something's something's domes. something like similar to similar, right? So here the Alter Rebbe is saying that this is referring to the two souls. That the godly soul is the idea of the image. Okay, we don't have the godly soul here. So that is the godly soul. Equals the tselim. And then he says, 
קדמוסנו של נפש אלוקיס היא בכינס צלם, והחיוניס היא בכינס דמוס. So the animal soul, right, is the, is the likeness. It's like it, but then that's like a, a step removed from an image because it's like that? making a drawing. Um, like if you were making a drawing and you weren't a very good artist, you would say, well, it's not a good likeness. But if you were a very good artist, you would say, oh, that, yeah, that, that's a, it's a good likeness. You got, you got the likeness. But it wouldn't be the same as a photo, which would be, um, which would be, you know, pixel by pixel, the same, uh, the same image. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm just looking at the, at the metaphor just to try to understand yes. the difference. Mm -hmm. um, the Rebbe once, uh, someone came in and uh, they were discussing the importance of a beard to a, a chosid. And he said, and either the person had shaven or, I don't know, trimmed the beard or shaven. And he, and he said, it's, it's a chisaron in the tzalem elokim. Meaning, we are a reflection of, of the divine image, and the divine image has a beard. That's part of the, you know, and the beard that we've learned, the beard is the idea of the 13 attributes of mercy and, you know, the flow from the intellect to the heart, and it's it's very important uh, detail. The women and, should have beards too, no? What's that? Women should have beards too then. <laughs> well, we learned last week that the one of the things you did with the woman that you, you you took him captive in war you cut her hair is that you right you sh you cut her hair because and we and and the altar Rebbe explained there that that's connected to gavura the woman is gavura and the hair is excess intellect and that that's that's dangerous that's something that's macabre tuma when it's on the side of, of Gavura. So the feminine, um, the beard is, you know, it, it's interesting that the beard is, uh, again, could be problematic by, anyways, it doesn't grow. It's not even a matter of our hormones uh, that's already saying something. It's not something that we get and we cut, but it just, so, The godly soul comes down into this world in order to be enclosed in the animal soul. The chiyunis, bahamis, and to battle ita with it, and refine it. להפריד הטוב מן הרע, to separate good from evil, ולהלויסה, להשם, and to elevate it to God, להפכה חשוכה לנהורה, and to transform darkness to light. וכן נקרא בשם ישראל, and that's why a Jew is called Israel. What's the Pasuk say? כי שרית, is it שרית or שריתה? Um, where would this be in Genesis? What? That's, that's talking about the uh, the angel and Yaakov. Right. The battle between uh, Yaakov and the angel of Esau. Probably Sharita. Right. I think it'd be easier for me. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to go for it, so let me just look up the puzzle. Yeah, we can look it up in, uh, in the Hamish online if you want.
I just ki sharit sharit or sharita im elokim v'im anashim v'tuchal. So the the altar ever brings this pasuk. Let me take a picture here of of the board. Uh, can you can you copy this or it's too hard? Uh, I'm not getting the whole the image. Oh, okay, that I could that I could do. Yeah. Okay, hold on. There we go. That's good. Got it. Got it. Yes, Ra El. Means Ki Sharita Im Imelokin. So he, he's the pasuk is saying that these letters Yud, Sin, Resh, Aleph, Lamed. This name Israel is related to this root, which means to prevail or to rule over, like the word Sar means like Sarah, right? It means a prince. So every Jew is a prince. He's, he rules over, he, he, he battled with God. And we're going to see what that means. Elohim in the plural. The Iman Hashema with people. And he prevailed. It's a sin. Ki sarit im Elohim im anashima tukal. Sarit meaning like sar. Like, right, but I want to know the Nikudot. Oh, Sarit. Sarit. Yes, Sarit. Okay. Right, you, you have striven to, to battle and to rule over. Yeah. Like a Sar is somebody who is, who is somebody who's, who's, uh, who's overcome, who's, who's an authority over, a power, overpowered. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what he's saying here, that... Israel, Israel, the Jew, means to, we're called Nikra, B'Shem Israel, Moshkoz Ki Sarit, Im Elohim Anashim V'Tuchal, Perush, Sha Nefesh Elokit, the godly soul, Tish Tarer, rules Al HaChiyunis HaBahamis, rules over, controls, overcomes the animal soul, la fuch kol mach shvosea umidosea asher lo la shem hema meira letov. Again, transforms the thoughts and 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 midos and emotions that are not godly, that are leading us in the other direction uh, and transforming them from bad to good. So the midos, just to translate this Kisarit im Elokim v'im anashim v'tuchal. So he says, what does it mean, this word God? He fought with God. So here the Alter Rebbe is explaining that it means Elokim is the Midos. Right? Amidos nikra Elokim. And he's fought with all the levels of the Midos. So this is the, he fought with the Midos, the level of the Midos, and with the people, with the Anashim. So he explains, Anashim is Mase Enosh, 
our human, the, the deeds of humanity with the world around us. And no, so, uh, so just a quick question, Yehudi. So when the word Elohim is used in connection with other gods, like idols, is that the same idea? Are we equating the emotions or the meters with like idolatry? Is, is that what's going on here? Or am I misunderstanding that? Um, well, this is not shot. This is the ultra is, is, is Drash, right? So here he's, but it would be interesting to see, Devorah, I don't know if you could go back. Do you, you have to leave? No, no, I'm, I, I've been having back problems. Um, you know what, my, my guess is, based on my, my learning in psychology, is that humanity and human beings have, by nature of our humanity, we make mistakes. And, and those mistakes are there for us to rectify. So that wouldn't be an Avodah Zorah thing. That would be like, like, that's just the nature of humanity. That because we're human, we make mistakes. And we don't always like to admit that, but, but we're much healthier saying, oh, I made a human mistake. I, you know, I accidentally spoke Lush and Hara, and, and, you know, you could beat yourself up for two weeks about it, or you could say, oh, I made a human mistake. I have to rectify it. So let's go back to the Pusik. That's what you wanted, Yehudas? Right. Well, in the Pusik, the shot is that he's battling with Asav's angel. Right. So there, right? He's, um, do you have Meforshim there? Yes. Genesis 32. 49, in fact. Here's Rashi. Oh, but that's about Yo Lo Yaakov. Right, it was Asav's guardian angel. Okay, so there's something here of the Chor Shore. He's here in Rashi. Um, okay, go back to Rashi. No longer be said that the blessings came to you through supplanting and subtlety, but through noble conduct and in an open manner, because later on the Holy One was a Bihi will reveal himself to you at Beit El and will change your name. There he will bless you and I shall be there and ad admit your right, your right to them, the blessings. It is to this that the, the passage refers and he strove with an angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. And the angel wept and made supplication to Yaakov. Mm -hmm. What was the subject of supplication? It stated, this is stated in the next verse at Beit El, he will meet us and there he will speak with us, implying the request. Wait until he will speak with us there and then I will admit your right to the blessings. This is what is meant when it states he declared him blessed there, that he begged him to wait and he did not agree to do so. Hmm. Right, so your question of Elohim, Rashi doesn't comment on that, but let's look at Sforno. It's just really the idea that, um, that the name Israel meant dominion over the emotion and the midos rather and you use the word Elohim and even going back to the Tanya where the Alta Rebbe um, expresses the idea that giving into anger is the same as worshiping idols and so my question was whether the whole idea of Elohim as referred to the midos also incorporated the idea of like worshiping quote unquote other gods, 
you know, idolatry, because when you talk about other gods, the, the word Elohim is also used. So, uh, you know, that was, that was right. kind of my question, whether the dominion over the, the Midos was really also the dominion over the idea of idolatry or of, you know, accepting other ideas as superior to... Well, look, definitely, see, this battle of Yaakov and Esau is between good and evil. You know, that's like going back to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So they were twins, and that was just like they were within their mother's womb together. Again, here we're learning that these are these two conflicting uh, natures. And uh, so definitely it includes, I mean, it, the chat says, uh, you've striven with, with me, meaning an angel of God, and with men, Esav and Lavan, you know, and they're all, they all represent the, the side of evil. So, okay. yes, but the, the word Elohim itself is used as like God is called the God of all gods, like, you know, Elokad, Elokad. Okay. okay, so, So again, this is the battle and this is the goal. So in the mushal, it's that the beloved wife should reign over the hated wife and that, that she has a Mila. So let's, let's see what, so what's the inner message here? Again, that Davka, her son, the son of the, of the despised wife gets the, the, the firstborn the inheritance, Davka, and what that means. So, um, so let's skip ahead. The altar is talking now about prayer, how prayer is called battling. It's called time of war. And he goes into details how our prayer, the Pesuket de Zimra and the Shema and the different levels of davening reflect this battle. So skip up to the next um, column. Um, and we'll start where? We'll start with So we said already, we said that the two souls then, so that the, the, first he mentioned the animal soul, and he said it comes from a very high place, Makom Gavoa, whereas the godly soul, and it comes down through all these intermediary stages of tzimtzum and, and descends, whereas the godly soul is kind of just given, and it's a part of God, and it's always connected, and it's never disconnected. So, so look um, in the second column where it says, around where you are, Vanishama Yarda Mi Makom. Yeah, that's it. It's right around there. Vanishama Yarda, you got it? Yeah. Mi Makom Gavoa. so we said we were talking all about prayer and prayer is the battle and prayer is through your davening you're getting this this ability to for the animal godly soul to rule, rule over the animal soul so here's the tail end of this that he's saying that um the love when we say shema 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then right after we say, Baruch Hashem, quietly, and then Ve'ahavta. So that section where we're saying Ve'ahavta is expressing every day this love, a new level of love that we're reaching. And that's what he's saying here, that, that it's Dafka through the battle, through the struggle between the two, that this new love is coming. That it's the, the, the soul comes down, it's enclosed in the, in the animal soul, and, and Yagia, he struggles, and he reaches Ve'ahavta. Now, I loved you, said the Lord. These are levels of love that a person goes through with all your heart, with all your soul, and then with all your might. The whole meodech. The whole meodech, he says, is with unlimited, unlimited love that's above logic, above das. Okay. So let's look now where it says Vihine, a line or two down. It starts there. Okay, Vihine. Vidoro, Sarishainim. Can, can I say something? It's yeah. interesting that he associates uh, with, uh, one moment, let me just. Uh, associate Vyorme uh, Ordecha with uh, love. I always understood Meordecha uh, with all your money, all your, because you put all your effort in, in, uh, in gaining money and so on. So this is Meordecha. And in, in this, uh, in this uh, Mama, he says it's with all your love. But isn't well, already with all your love in the all your heart? The well, we all your might. Sides. Yes, all your there is might, and, and I understood okay. it's like um, uh, your all your money because it's where you put all your efforts, might, and and right. That's have, that's you know. mammon. That's pr that's pshat. So now Hasidus is explaining that you reach a higher level of love that's above the intellect, that's unlimited, and at that level of love, you, you're, you're in a state of bitul, belief of all. And this is not in uh, Levavecha. No, that's a lower level of love. So it's expressed in the willingness to give all of your being, all of your possessions, and all your, you know, this total devotion. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Now, okay. So he says that Hine Bedurus Rishonim in the early generations, Shalohaya Hara Gover Bahem, they weren't influenced by evil or ruled by evil, Kolkach. When they were Davin, we said Davin is, is the battle, is part of the battle of overcoming the animal soul, godly soul. So they, it was enough for them to say Shema, Krishna. That's what they prayed. And with that, they overcame, they conquered the evil. But this is not the case with us. And he's saying, now he's saying in his time, the time of the Alter Rebbe, when is that, 200 years ago? More than, <laughs> yeah, more than 200 years ago. 
then it's not enough just to say Kriya Shema. Because we are in the time of the footsteps of Mashiach. So Mashiach comes closer and is imminent and the evil is mitka bermao. The evil takes takes over. It's very powerful. It permeates. Ubilti afshar levatlo mikol the chol bekrishma levada. We certainly cannot, with Krishna alone, meditating on God's oneness, cause all of the evil to dissipate. Ulazos. Tiknu Shmonaisre, and that's why our sages enacted the silent prayer of the eighteen benedictions. Brachos Uboruhu Lashon Hashpa'a. And there's eighteen blessings. And each the idea of each blessing is the idea of a flow coming down. Baruch, the word Baruch itself. Bracha is like the word uh, recha, like a pool of water flowing. As lashon hashpa'a v'ham shacha, drawing down. Sha'anu mevakshim sheyum shach v'yushpa v'chines ata. So he's giving you a beautiful um, meditation on the words of a blessing. So baruch is may God cause to flow down like water from above in, in, in a multitude of blessing, bracha, baruch, ata. What does ata mean? Ata lenocha chavaya, meaning personally standing before. I'm baruch ata you, Hashem. In a personal way, I'm saying that to you, present. Elokeinu, our God, Shie beno bis galus, beno bis galus libano. Vumela yevutal hara mikol bechol, kibitul achosh echule. That Elokeinu, you were talking about Elokim before, so Elokim is gematria teva, ha teva. And so it means bringing everything down into physicality. So bring, oh God, please bring down, draw down all of this bounty and chef and blessing and flow down in a, in a way that it's our God, that it's in our reality. She, uh, it should be revealed to us. He says, with, with these 18 blessings in the Shmonasre <coughs> and these lofty kavanas, certainly all the evil will be, will dissipate. The bitula choshe and the darkness will be nullified. Kanal. So one of the blessings that we say, and this is connected to Elul, it's connected to Tishrei, to Rosh and Kippur, the ten days of Tshuva, and the Slichos, is that every day when we daven, we say, Salach lanu avinu ki chatanu. Forgive us. Where are we? So one of the, one of the 18 benedictions is Salach lanu, O God, forgive us Oh, there it is. You, you moved it up. Salach lanu minu ki chatanu. En So what are we saying here? He wants us to know. Forgive us Hashem because we have sinned. So it's a, all, it's a very interesting question because on the one hand, when you get to Shmonasre, you're like on the level of a tzaddik. So why are, we, why are we talking about 
that we sinned, because now we're on this very pure high level. We're, we're in Atsilut at that point. So how are you talking about evil and sin? In Perusha, in Perusha, the meaning is Mipnei Yiras Haonish, that we're afraid of punishment. She shlach lanu bishvil shelo yanet yanosh botanu chas v'shola. So he says it's not the kavana that we we sinned and forgive us and don't punish us. God forbid. Ach perusho, he says the inner explanation of this prayer, this part of the davening, is kamashal adam hamevakesh michavero mechila. This is very beautiful. It says, it's like a friend, a loving companion, or an endeared person that, that you know, Haver, Havera, and what about it? Let's see, where are we? Kamashal Adam Mabakesh Mi Havero Mechila. Because I love my friend so much and this person is so dear to me, so I ask for their forgiveness and pardon. Shit Galer Ritsono Elai that he should think favorably of me. Because I love him so much and I love her so much and I care about every single detail of our relationship. So that's why I'm thinking, oh, I'm so sorry I, you know, I was late and I'm so sorry I uh, was inconsiderate and I'm so sorry I said the wrong thing and you know, I should have been more sensitive and I didn't listen and so all the details when you're just approaching a stranger, you know, maybe bump into someone, you say, oh, sorry, excuse me, and you walk on. Because, you know, that was a superficial and a, a, a distant connection. But someone who's precious and dear to you, so that's, that's like what we're asking for, that we love Hashem. So we're saying, you know, salach lano avinu ki chatanu, that even I want our relationship to be perfect and to be renewed and to be even better than ever. So let's, I want to uh, wipe out and, and make, make anew uh, all the details. So, this goes with Tzonal, Yedei Yud Gimel Midas Arachamim. And that really, Yedei um, Yisoros Rachmanusu. And so when we pray to Hashem, Salach uh, Lanovinu Ki Chatanu, again, we, we want to arouse His mercy, that His love should, should, be, should be re respond to our love for Him. And we're asking for these Galus Ritzono, Al Yudei Yud Gimel Midas Arachamim, that His will should be revealed through these 13 attributes of mercy. Which, if you'll remember, we just started talking about Elul recently. So we said Elul, the king, is in the field. And that that whole idea of the king in the field and that he's greeting us favorably is that his 13 attributes of mercy are shining at this time. That love and that caring and that pure uh, mercy and 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 connection that that we have with him so that's what the that's what that brocha means he calls it uh, a nahara of farsimona dahya a river of pure uh persimmons amavarim malbinim avonosehem Shall Yisrael, and these these attributes enable us to cleanse and refine and purify us. Below you, masachim, not masachim avdilim, be his galus ritzoni yisporach, and there should be no obstacles and no blocks and nothing preventing that relationship to be renewed. Vehine, 
And now we'll finish. It's, it's, we're right at the end of this mimer. Yemei Elul. This month of Elul, Miuchadim is especially is, is, uh, is an auspicious time. To arouse this mercy and this love. Like we said, it's all, we talked about the love and Adam and Chava turning around and we, we want to, uh, just this mercy and love between us. The Yom Kippurim, Yom Kippur, who is Galus, if you remember, here the Alter Rebbe says, when we get to Yom Kippur, go through this whole process, Elul, Chayelul, preparing, getting ready for Rosh Hashanah, and Rosh Hashanah, as we said, it's like those 10 days are the song, is the birthday of, of the Chosen Kala, of Adam and Chava, the sawing off, the turning around. So here he, he explains that on Yom Kippur, we reveal God's will, the level of will in the crown, in the Keter. That's what we said, it's, Motzi Yom Kippur is called God's name, Shem, Shem Hashem. And, and he says, we're, we're coming back to the time when the Jewish people sinned at the golden calf. And we know that happened in Tammuz. And then Moshe went up 40 days, came down on Rosh Chodesh Elul, went up again, came down on Yom Kippur. So this whole, this whole time is again, historically with the golden calf, asking, praying for God's forgiveness, begging him to share our love with him, and then him receiving it, his rachamim shining down. So for us, again, he says in Kippur is, is like, when it was, it was announced to them, yes, God does forgive you. He, he loves you. Yom Kippurim ki az hu iskalus haratzon, the revelation of God's will. Vihine bechines avarabba hanau. So this great love, bechines bechol meodecha, this abundant love, he be yeser seis veoiz, begavo lamala mi avas haneshama terem boo la olam hazeh. This is very interesting. He, the Alter Rebbe explains that, like you may ask, if the soul is so pure and so high, what does it need to go through this? It seems like a big schlep, you know, you know, uh, cup vetic, right? And so he says, but no, the fact is that what one accomplishes is he's revealing Ahavarabha, this abundant, great love. And that explains, is like, as we said, Bechol Meodecha, and this is much greater and higher than the love that the soul has before it comes down into this world. So now we're getting the answer that the despised wife, who's a troublemaker, the animal soul, and, and, and takes us, is always schlepping us places, by our working with it, and refining it, and elevating it, we are bringing down and reaching a higher level than we ever could have reached through just our godly soul, which would not have led us to sin. He said, he said before, if it was just the godly soul, we wouldn't sin. 
והיא באה דווקא על ידי הסברוס נפש החיוניס. Again, דווקא through the refinement of the animal soul, the vivifying soul, וביטול הרע שבא. Nullifying the evil that's in it. כמו שכוסף מגלה מוקייס, מיני חושך, יסורון האור, מן החושך. Right, this is called the advantage of light that comes from darkness. What's the light? The higher love. What's the darkness? The descent into this world in the animal soul. Dafka. Kmo shikosuv vimakom acher. Vizeu tachlis. You see where we are? And go down. Yeah. Vizeu tachlis yuridis and ashama ba'olam azeh. And this is the purpose of this descent of the soul in this world. Vivarer ulalaben harash b'nefesh ha'bahamis. To refine, and lilaben comes from the word white, and it literally means to whiten or bleach. And a lot of times the analogy is given like a garment that's soiled, right? Like getting, getting your laundry to be really clean, so it's a big job. So how much more so the garments of the soul? have to be whitened. And that means refining out and, and transforming the evil. Bahamis, in order to get to this Avarabha, this high level of love. Ubira Davar. So now let's tie it into the Pasuk. Ubira Davar, Biyais, Shishorish Nefeshachiyunis, Himi Madrega Gavoame Ot. So the root of this matter, all, all that we've said is that the root of the vivifying soul, the vitalizing soul, is a high, a very high madrega. And his reference here to prove this is he's talking about how in Genesis, at the end of Parshas Vayishlach. So it talks about all the kings, the, the, uh, the kings of Edom, the Edomite kings. Right, and he's also talking about the the line of Esav. Again, all this, the side of the evil, of the animal soul, basically. Okay? So we can see um, verse 31, chapter 36, 31. Uh, chapter 36. Right, so here's all the, the, the lineage of Esav, and then 30, 31. These are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom. Before a king reigned over Israel. So there's a lot said about this in Hasidus. But Edom Bichlal is our final gullus, our final period of exile. And Edom is really the kind of what is, reflects exile, gullus, concealment. Um, and it also, it's explained, has to do with the world of Tohu. Esav Bichlal, right? We said this is the lineage before of Esav. So, um, so Edom is, is part of Esau, right? Anyway, so this is all the side of evil, and that's why he's, he's explaining here. So it says that there are eight kings. 
goes on to talk about eight kings. Right? It says, Vayim loch be'adom Bela, ben Boor. Bela reigned, the son of Boor became king, and the name of his city was Din Hava. And then it says, Bela died. So he, he reigned and he died. And he was succeeded as king by Yovav, son of Zerach. And he reigned and then he died. And then another one, Husham. And Husham died. He reigned and he died. And then Hadad. And Hadad reigned and then he died of Yimloch, Viyamas. Right? And then Samla. And he reigned and he died. And then Shaul. And he reigned and he died. And then Balchanan. Dies. He reigned and he died. He was succeeded as king by Hadar. And the name of his city was Pau. And here it says his wife's name, didn't yet talk about a wife's name, was Mehei Tavel, daughter of Matreid. And, and that's it. So it's explained in Hasidus, and here in the, in the Chumash talks a lot about it that these kings allude to the creation and collapse of the seven lower spherot of the world of Tohu. Meaning the emotions of Tohu broke, the breaking of the vessels of Tohu. And it says this occurred before any king reigned over the descendants of Israel meaning before the creation of Tikkun, the world of Tikkun. And the death of these kings it alludes to what's called Shvir Sakalim, the breaking of the vessels. So that's what he's saying here at the end of the Mimer, that, oh, not yet, we didn't finish the bottom, previous page, that Eile HaMalochim, Beretz Adom, Lifnei Malach Melech, Levene Yisrael, that's what we just read. That those kings died is the breaking of, of the world of Klippa, of, of, of Esav and Edom. Shenafla b'shvir sakelim b'hesterim v'tzimtzumim rabim. So that's what happened in creation, right? First there was Tohu and then Tikkun and the breaking of the vessels and the sparks dispersed and we have to refine the sparks. So again, that's, that's our work. So when? We refine and separate the evil within the klipa and within the spark, you know, releasing the sparks of this world. Al yedei nefesh elokis, through the godly soul, memele tagil avarab. This will naturally bring to this level of abundant love. Yeser says, kamokodem yuri dosa. And again, this is going to bring, this is, this is the goal, to do this. V'zehu, and here's the, here's the connection, Shoshana, between the two wives. V'zehu v'haya ha'ben ha'bachor l'sniya. So again, Nefesh Elokis, the beloved wife, the Nefesh ha'bahamis is the hated wife. So then why does the ben ha'bachor Davka from the despised wife get the double portion of the inheritance. She Davka mi nefesh Bahamas. She he snua. The haya ben abachor lifme malach melech. So again, that's all rooted in tohu, meaning the godly soul is from this very high place. Tohu preceded uh, this, the root of our soul. So even though the, uh, the, godly, the godly soul is higher and is pure and doesn't even need tikkun, 
the godly soul, the animal soul, soul, excuse me, that fell lower is from a higher place. And therefore, the inheritance, which means the greater accomplishment in this world, comes through Davka refining the animal soul. Nehine lesnia, and, and why is she called the hated one? Kasiv biyud lashen davar acher. Um, I knew Har Sinai, Har She Yarda Sina Laakum, Lim Osara Betaklis Al Yede His Galus, Haratzon Veava Shilamala Meadas. So that's the end of the mimer, he, he says, because Davka, the hated one, the despised one, it has in it a yud. So he compares this to the word Sinai, right? The Sniya is the hated one. And that's like the word Sinai. Right, it's similar in its form and with the Yud. And why was it called Sinai? So our sages say it's the mountain upon which hate descended to the nations of the world. So the hate generally is explained as that the, that's why the nations hate the Jewish people. That us, you know, on a super, on a extended external level, that because we got the Torah and we have this special, this special thing from God. So it, it brought this a, a, a separation and call, it, say, it actually says Sinai comes from the word Sina, hate, right? That it caused this hate. But the, here the ultra is turning it around. He says, what's the purpose of hate? To hate evil to hate evil and to want to uproot it. And how do we do that? Like we said before, how do we overcome and transform the animal soul? Through revealing the level of Ratzon. God, the, the will through prayer, through breaking through to Ava Rabba. And, uh, and again, this is the love that's above the intellect. Okay. So that's his explanation. So let's summarize before we take a break. Can anyone summarize? Would you like to share what you gave, what you gained there? Uh, it was hard to put all those pieces together, but let's see. We have the um, we have the two souls. We have the godly soul and we have the animal soul, and. Although the godly soul was in a, is, comes from, a, a, from directly from God, the animal soul, which joins with the nefesh abamis, which which is actually in the physical world, um, through its striving and overcoming the the material world, it reaches a level of love, which is so deep and so passionate. That, that it creates a, a holiness and, and a transformation that the godly soul can't even do. Yeah. It's like, well, I think it's in the other mimer, it says that this is like how it says a Balchuva is on a higher level than a tzaddik because he's, he is, he has to go through the process of overcoming and the up, up, the opponent fighting yeah opposition. yeah yeah i mean it it it's kind of the essential romance it's a romantic scenario where you know the story of romance is that, that you have you have lovers and they're drawn to each other and then they're alienated and they conflict and then they come back so, so it's that it's through that conflict and that reconciliation that 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 deeper love, um, that that deep, that that's what all stories, love stories are. 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's, in a synopsis, that's what a love story is. That that you know, it's 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 not that that there's no conflict. That the conflict itself leads to something which which is much deeper and more passionate and a greater level of appreciation. My husband had his, uh, uh, his very interesting response to that, that he said, really, if you look at um, poetry and music and uh, uh, writing and uh, the media and uh, movies and what have you, um, one of the most common themes is love. Right. Either loss of love or seeking the love or uh, you know, the jealousy involved in a, in a competition or what it, whatever it is. But, um, and that's because, that's because that is the first essential emotion. Ava, chesed, in, in the soul. And the highest way to use the love is to love God. Right? Although we use love to love our family, our friends, lower level love is just loving our activities or our possessions or <laughs> music or the sunset or whatever. But uh, um, the highest level, as we said, is Ava, a chef. So... He says, but the thing is, in the world at large, um, and this is uh, reflected in, in, the, in Shabbos, the way Shabbos is set up, because uh, Friday night is like very romantic. Mm -hmm. so Friday night is like, it's also connected, it, it, there's a muscle of a marriage there that, that they, the, the country bumpkin marries the daughter of, of the king. Mm -hmm. So the first night, she goes into, he goes into her, into the palace. And that's Friday night. So Friday night is very romantic, candlestick, candlelight. And uh, the, the contrast from the weekday and uh, what have you, um, the mystery. Um, and then Shabbos day is, is then uh, that he takes her into his domain, into his uh, place, into, into the world. <laughs> um, and that's, that's rep in, uh, you know, to, um, once I'm getting it turned around, I'll have to check this. But that's reflected in the, in the reading of the Torah. The Shabbos day we read the Torah, which compared to Friday night is like very bland and kind of, you know, it's not as exciting. <laughs> you know, as the energy of Friday night, but it's, but that's more like, um, so, so what my husband explained, and then, and then Shabbos afternoon, so it's kind of like up, the energy is like going up, and then down, and then up again, Friday afternoon, and then going down into the week. So, so he said that, in the world, they use love and they use romance because that draws people and it's very exciting and it's, it's, uh, uh, it's what, you know, makes us tick. We want to, you know, it draws us. But he said they never, they don't have Shabbos day. They never can go into Shabbos, they don't have Shabbos, right? So they can never go into, like, like at, at the end of the romance, it used to be they would just close the curtain and they would say, and they lived happily ever after, you know, or they didn't, but there was no real way of describing the happily ever after because that, because that only can be done through the Torah. And that's what, um, so he said that all of the, the, uh, it's only the Torah that can have the, the real romance and and how you know how to how to live out the romance? It's the guidebook how to do that. Without it, you can just you know dream about some <laughs> unknown, unreachable uh, reality. So anyways, Yeshakoya. Um, but uh, I, it was not clear for me the 
uh, the morning, the night was clear. But yeah. the, uh, the morning with the reading of the Torah in afternoon was not clear. I, I could not grasp it. The, uh, the so way you... The morning yeah. is that she, she went into his house. She went into, into his... He was a poor man. So then he brought her to his home. But Shabbos, Shabbos morning, not the weekdays. You say Shabbos morning, she goes to his house. Yes, this is a Torah reading. So the Torah reading represents the, you know, how to, how to live the how to live the marriage, how to make a marriage mm. with God in the world. You know, it's not as exciting as as the 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 you know, Friday night, going into, you know, the wealth and the palace and the candlelight and the, you know, but, uh, but that's the purpose. The purpose is to, you know, bring the godliness down into the world. And that's, that's through the Torah. And that's, that's the happily ever after, where they can really, you know, build a relationship and make a world. In afternoon, Mincha, uh, what is uh, what did you explain? Afternoon, it, well, it also says uh, afternoon is is the marriage itself is like is the consummation of the marriage. That's why in the prayers it says in the Siddur, Friday night it says the Anuchuva. They should rest on it and then her. Friday morning, uh, Shabbos morning, it says Vayanuchuvo and they should rest on it in the masculine. And Friday afternoon, in the prayer, in the Shemun it says, Vayanuchu Vam. Plural, the male and female together. So that, but that's already shifting out of, you know, taking it now into reality. You know, after you've had this, Shabbos is like renewing the marriage, and then Shabbos afternoon, you're already reading next week's portion on Friday afternoon, you're already taking it into the week. But that's the real, the real yichud is at, is at mincha. Interesting. Thank you very much. Right, so let's now it's clear. <laughs> let's take a break. And uh, you, have, you have any other questions? Or? Me? Yeah, anybody. You know, I like that picture you put up. Yeah, it's about me, so of my grandson. Nice. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Uh -huh. I wanted just me, but uh, he could not handle it. He put them together. I said, okay, let us be together. <laughs> okay, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. Okay, we'll go into the other mimer. Let's take a little 10 minutes. Is 10 minutes good? Yeah. Good. Uh, Shoshana, you're tired? 